Hi and welcome. So this time around uh, I've got a little project here to make uh, drilling with really small drill bits a little bit easier. So you might remember when I did the uh, printer nozzle and uh, it has a 0.3 millimeter hole through it. I don't know if you can see that uh, but it's a very tiny hole in the end of this guy and I was using the tailstock of my lathe to drill the hole and it's very smooth uh, but it's really hard to get a feel for uh, how hard you're pushing. So I have this Albrecht chuck and uh, I'd like to make it so that uh, you can hold on to this, apply the tension you need to uh, drill and you can feel exactly how much force you're putting on the drill bit directly with your fingers. Um, the Albrecht makes a smaller chuck. Uh, I don't have it. It happens to be very expensive. Buying it new is over 400 bucks. I bought this one used in a lot of tools and uh, bought a rebuild kit for it. Uh, so this one does go down far enough. Uh, it would be nice to have the smaller one, but uh, we'll have to look into that in the future. So the thing I'm going to build is a really simple tool. It starts with these MT4, which is the uh, taper, Morse taper of my tail slot, in, uh, tail stock uh, in the lathe. And uh, they come in multiple thread, uh, MT to thread. So uh, the ones I've been using all these years is the uh, 3 8 24. Um, I was looking, I wanted to find something beefier, and I found a 5 8 16. Now, the 5 8 16 thread's a little bit uh, uncommon, and I actually don't have a tap for that, so I could single point it, or I can do what I did, which is order a tap, uh, which hasn't arrived yet. Um, they also have an M12 for those, uh, those that are doing this in metric. All industrial sells it online on eBay. They're very inexpensive. I think they're around 10 to 15 bucks each, so a really good deal. There's all kinds of tools you can make with these, too. Uh, I showed in the past in a video making a, uh, let me just grab it, as a matter of fact. Uh, for my, uh, annular cutters. I made an adapter that screws on the 3 8 24 that holds annular cutters in my tailstock. Uh, also, I can uh, put that in the... Uh, I have an R8 that's threaded, but uh, I also have MT adapters for my mill, so I could always use the annular cutter on the mill, although these annular cutters will fit in a 3 quarter inch uh, end mill holder, so that's really not a problem. Um, I've made a couple other adapters over the years. Uh, all just thread on to these uh, really handy parts. So what I intend to do is I'm going to take this stress proof, this 1144 stress proof here, and I'm going to take a section of it and we are going to bore, well first we're going to face very, very perpendicular faces on this guy. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by turning and facing off one side to get a square reference to what I'm holding on the outside. Then I'm going to turn a portion of the outside as well so that it will be square relative to the face I've turned. I will drill and tap for the 3H24 and that flat part will mate on the ground section uh, on this guy right here. Then I will take and flip it around in a four jaw and we will carefully drill and bore out a half inch hole that will support the this uh, chuck arbor. And what we'll do is we're just going to have a very, very close fitting hole. And as the drill bit goes in, it'll just slide in and out of the uh, tailstock uh, holder. And it'll all the only time the drill bit will catch is when you hold it with your fingers. And that way, you'll know exactly how much force you're putting on the drill bit. Um, I've seen these for sale before. They actually, uh, big companies actually sell these. But it's such a simple part to make, although it's probably not a simple part to make extremely accurately. So we're going to give it a shot and see how uh, decent a job we can do. All right, let's head over to the lathe and uh, get a start on this. So I initially have this guy loaded in the three-jaw chuck, and that's actually because it does not matter for the first operations. Three-jaw chucks are uh, very reasonable as long as you don't take the part out. Then you don't, you're don't you not guaranteed repeatability. So since I already had the three-jaw chuck on the lathe, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to face this, and I'm going to turn the outside down a bit. I've got to turn it. It's one and a half inches, and I've got to turn it down to about one and a quarter, actually just a little bit under. Uh, so uh, let's get started with that. Then I'm going to drill and tap. This end. I'm going to try and drill full depth with a small drill bit, the tap drill bit for the 3 8 24 threads. And uh, then we will take this out, change the chuck to a four jaw, dial this guy in, and we will very carefully bore that other side out. So I know I've repeated myself here. Let's just get started.
That's actually a pretty decent finish. All right, so we're, we're going to go back to the fast feed rate. Let's see if we can take some uh, junior A-bomb size depth of cuts here. So let me get my zero. That's uh, definitely. Let's start uh, easy. Let's start with 50,000 total depth of cut. We're going to try a 75 thousandths depth of cut. Okay. So let's up the feed rate a little more. That gives kind of a eh finish. Uh, this will be 14 thousandths a revolution. Let's go back to 50 thousandths. Well, it's not improving the finish, but it sure is uh, going fast. So we're getting a tiny, about a half a thousandth taper taking these massive bites. Uh, we're going to slow this down. Last pass, and I've uh, flipped the cutter around, exposed a new edge to see how it does. Oh, much better already. I think I might have pushed it a little bit too much and uh, damaged the edge there. So this looks pretty darn good. It's like still about three ten thousandths. I think I could have done better than that. I've done better before. So uh, anyways, we're just going to relieve this edge just a tiny amount here. And then we're going to drill and tap. So next up to get this hole going straight, we're going to use a screw machine drill bit and we're just going to go uh, in a little ways here. So we're going to try and power tap this initially and what I do is I run at the slowest speed. I do not lock the tailstock and I just feed it in and it should pull the tailstock right in. Some debris actually on the faces in there. I didn't get it perfectly cleaned off, but uh, that's a really nice fit right there. So an interesting thought occurred to me uh, since I was mounting this on an MT4 uh, holder anyways, um, my lathe came with an MT6 to MT4 adapter. So why don't I just turn it using the MT4 adapter itself? And we'll make sure it's seated nicely. So now you can't get any more on access than that. <laughs> I uh, made sure that everything was very clean before I did that. All right, that looks good. So we are faced off and should be square and perpendicular. And uh, so the drill didn't make it all the way through. I was hoping it would. Didn't count on it exactly, but I was hoping it would make it. So we're going to come back here with a center drill and then a stubby, make up, meet up with the other hole, and then we're going to bore it out and then finally ream it so we can get really close. So I center drilled this and I, I met up with the uh, other hole while I was center drilling it, which I wasn't going very deep. So I almost made it. Um, so we're just going to get our uh, other drill bit back here, our uh, uh, cue, and then we're just going to bore this guy straight through and ream it. And hopefully we will be right where we want to be. 
All right, so we've switched to a solid carbide boring bar here, and uh, I'm hoping I can pull this off without too much chatter. I'm really not sure. I think I'm going to slow the RPMs down here to slower than I normally would, but uh, again, trying to avoid chatter. Solid carbide can only go so far. All we want to do is just clean this up and go straight with it. A lot better than I thought it would. There's a bit of vibration there. Four holes this small while you're trying to figure out what the size is, I find the gauge pins are the best way to do it. So this guy is right at 0 0.380 and we have to get up to 0.5. So we have a little bit of boring to do and it's very slow going. Got to take really small bites with uh, this tool so it doesn't chatter. So I'll just bring you back. To speed things up, after I bored it, uh, the hole, I uh, drilled it out to two sizes under half an inch and then bored it one more time and it's at 0.478 right now. So we got a really nice fit here. It's a little bit too much of a piston fit because it's actually hard to push this back. Uh, the air pressure in there wants to fight it. But other, and it also sucks it back in. So what I need to do is I take this, need to take this guy over to the mill and I need to cross drill a little hole in the back to let air in and out so that this will be smoother and then we should be done and I'll bring you right back. So here we are done. Uh, let me pop this guy out so you can see it. I actually put it in the tailstock. But uh, here is the MT4 adapter made it up with the part I made. There's the air hole to allow the air out because it's such a tight fit. Um, pop this guy in, make sure it's seated, and uh, you put your chuck in and uh, you are good to go. It is a very, very smooth fit. It, uh, it has almost, well, there's no slop at all. It's a, it's a really tight fit. I think it's on the order of half a thousandth. So when you're drilling with this, the uh, chuck spins freely until you grab it. So with small drill bits, you can easily hold the amount of force they generate. So you just grab with your fingers, stop the drill bit, and if you feel too much tension, you just release, and it'll spin freely, preventing it from damaging. And as you drill in deeper, you just slide out further. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.